Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Chef's Meal, where we talk about whatever and never and everything else in between. <laughs> if you having girl problems, I feel bad for you, son. I got 99 problems, but a chain one. Now, welcome to the Chef's Meal. My name is Casey. My name is Sean, and we're two chefs just talking about our lives one finished plate at a time. And if you you didn't know, in addition to this podcast, we also have a video format. So come check us out. We're talking about whatever and ever and everything else. Everything in between. In between. Sean, I got a question for you. Yeah, And this is is hilarious. Okay, my wife and I went to Hot Pot. Not Hot Pot. the The Melting Pot. Okay. Um, first of all, overrated. (laughs) (laughs) So you're going to call yourself the melting pot. Those are uh, overrated. Unnecessary. Nani? Um, what other words should I put in there? Yeah, that's all I got. Mm. Unnecessary. Overrated. However, it's a good time. Okay. Okay. Um, I got mad because I could have made it. 20 times better for the amount that we were charged <laughs> for it. <laughs> Man, that's, that's the blessing of the curse to having the skills that we have. Like, you're going to be super critical of everything you, you, you eat or, I you know, know, you're just like, man, I could have made just, this. Or, or you get inspired. You're just like, I know I could totally hook this up. This is good. But yeah. I got my own spin coming. So that's what happened. Uh, so wifey and I went out to Melting Pot. It was, it was a good time. Um, I didn't eat. Oh, okay, so here's what happened, right? We ate the first course is the cheese course, and I'm like, oh man, this is it's not gonna sit well. Um, mm. We we partake, and I was like, <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Went to the bathroom real quick. Uh, come back, and then the second course, which took forever, was the salad course, and I think they just forgot about us because there weren't that many in the restaurant. Okay. And it's fairly big. There's a lot of there's a lot of seats, but it's a uh, it's a Monday. It's a Monday night, so it's not really packed or anything. Yeah, it shouldn't be popping on a Monday night. Yeah, yeah. Unless I mean, it, I have no idea. This is the first um, time we've been. Monday's there. cheese night. I <laughs> we get a salad, <laughs> which is a generic salad that um, felt like it came out of a bag, which I love absolutely. So they call it a California salad it's the um craisins um candied pecans okay blue cheese garden greens and then they called it a day and then it has like a raspberry uh vinaigrette on top of it which is which is fine whatever and then on to the main Sounds course like a which is, yeah, yeah, yeah on to the main course is a four course we did we want a four course meal we went to now have meat section so they Little little things of meats coming to you, then you cook it into the pot in like a, a stock or whatever. Uh, okay. That was kind of delicious. I, I dig that, but it was like 20 different sauces. And I'm like, is this really necessary? <laughs> but I get it. I absolutely get it. And then we get to the chocolate part. Now, as you know, I am allergic to chocolate. I can't partake too much. Yeah. I was like, hey, can we ask them? Because um, I need to use the restroom again. <laughs> Because the salad had cheese. I was like, can we just ask him real quick uh, while I use the restroom um, what percent chocolate it is? Because I'm okay with dark chocolate as long as it's above 60%. I, sure. I figured that um, so the, the actual chocolate that we use at the restaurant, the, the dark chocolate that we use at the restaurant, I'm cl- completely fine with. So I figured it just needs to be a higher quality percentage then my body can process it better and I'm, I'm not so keen to be a pizza pie on my face or my body somewhere, right? Uh, I come back. She said, it's it's 60%. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll deal with that. We got the Dulce de Leche chocolate. Okay. Sean, delicious. A little little salt, like a cracked salt on top of it. I was like, ooh, ooh fancy, fancy, huh? Um, well, then we partook of the chocolate. I had maybe a few bites and I was done. I was like, I, I think I'm okay. If I eat anymore, I'm pretty sure something's going to pop up somewhere. I don't want to have that. So Caitlin was just like, oh my God. She's like literally licking the bowl. She had a good time. <laughs> I had a great time. But for everybody else that wants to be in the melting pot, do not do it. <laughs> Let me give you a recipe to do it. Okay. It'll save you tons of money. Tons of money. Um, and yeah, that, that's, that's all I got for you, Sean. I, I just want to tell you my experience with a melting pot. Uh, have you been to a melting pot? 
No, I have not. Yeah, don't do <laughs> I it. mean, like, yeah, the melted cheese is not. <laughs> yeah, not yeah. You know what? Honestly, I could, honestly, beyond having never been there, I don't think I've ever actually had a fondue. Oh, yeah. 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 And- Anything I'm, melted that you dip into, yeah, you had. That's like the most I mean, common thing. The, cl- the you ever had is cheese like, and dip, like yeah, chips I've mean, never had like a cheesy dip, you know, or like got nachos and cheese. But like, it's like the same the idea thing. of formally sitting down to just like, nah, we're having a pot of cheese. You know, <laughs> nope. It's you know, never it been cool if it had um some fries, motherfucker. You know what? Cool if it had some fries. fries, yo, I'd be like, yo, absolutely. I, let's could do be it. cool for like some like a disco fry fondue or something, maybe. Oh, a disco fry. All right, the New Jersey feels okay. Yeah, I dig yeah, it. yeah. I could, I could be persuaded to that. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't have to pull my arm. You'd be like, yeah, we got some disco fries over here. I'd be like, oh, okay. Goodness. I couldn't. I don't know. So. For for everyone that wants to do fondue, don't don't let my discouragement discourage you. However, yeah, expect to pay. I think it was it was ninety dollars a person, for, ninety dollars for the both of us. Oh oh, I was like wow. It was like a hundred bucks. Are we in the wrong business. So fifty dollars a person. <laughs> you need to be out here selling for, pots for, of cheese. Look, I'm telling you, for a hundred dollars, <laughs> right, Sean? If we if we broke it down, yeah. we can get I don't know four sets of cheeses, a pound each for like I don't know twenty bucks, maybe right? Sure. Um, at the store or whatever mm-hmm. supermarket you want to, um, right. put down to all in a pot, melt it, mm-hmm. <laughs> get some veggies or whatever. That'll cost you another ten bucks, so we're up to thirty. Um, right. Get some meats that you'll mm-hmm. like for another fifteen dollars or whatever. Okay, some decent cuts. We're at forty five, right. and then right. get some decent then- chocolate. Spend another twenty bucks for sixty five dollars. I could have fed us. Right. 65 bucks, you're in. And then you got to pay yourself hey. to make it. <laughs> Are you still under your 90? <laughs> I'm expensive. I feel, like you might, five, I feel like you might be a bit more expensive. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm super expensive. So I don't think my wife can afford me, but you know, it's okay. <laughs> I feel like it's going to be some microwaving to save some time here or there. <laughs> I'm just, just going to cut some corners real quick. Yeah, really. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's the hot pot experience. Cheese. I'm sorry. Let's go. Let's go on ahead with um with <laughs> <laughs> Sean. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh, uh, it's coming at you. Are you ready for Sean's Sean's that Tuesday? Oh, it's actually a Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. Sean's Tech Tuesday. Sean's Tech hey. Tuesday coming at you with the best tech news. That's it. Hit it and, away, uh, Sean. Today's tech news is well, it's a it's a throwback for me. So okay. um, the other day I was cleaning up around the house because like my wife was out of town for a business trip and the baby was with my mother, so I pretty much was in the house by myself. So I'm mm-hmm. like cleaning up around the house and I dig out my old PlayStation Three. So I'm like, man, I have not wow. used this thing in years. I wonder what it's like to use in 2020. And um, I power it on. I can't find a controller. <laughs> 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 I'm like, okay, all right, cool. All right, so um, I did do some more boxes. I do find a controller. And the one thing that I noticed is that um, the back of the controller is like bulging out. Bulging? Yes. Like, and, um, like the battery pack? Yeah, like, exactly, exactly. So, like, I hadn't used <laughs> the thing in so long. It? Right, yeah, like, the, the, the controller had like a, has a lithium-ion battery, and I hadn't used it <laughs> in so long that it that began to discharge itself and expand. <laughs> yes, yes, and yes, yes. So, what do I do? I pair it up. <laughs> <laughs> and I plug in a I plug in a wire just to see if the thing will work. So I plug it in, oh. it works, and I'm like, all right, this battery is pretty dangerous. So I'm like, I should probably go get a new battery pack. So I order one on Amazon, it shows up. Um, I discon you know, I take the controller apart, I slap it together, it's working fine. So I'm like, man, I should probably try to play a game that I own that I never played. Mm-hmm. So I remember I bought a copy of 
Yes, PS3. So I buy, uh, well, I didn't buy it, but rather I um, dig out a copy of Gran Turismo 6 because that oh, game man. came out right around the same time that the PlayStation 4 came out. So, like, I might have played it, like, twice. So I put the disc inside the machine, the game loads up, and it says you have an update. So I'm like, how long could this take? <laughs> it's going to take forever because it it's says a PS3. You have updates one of 22. <laughs> 22 updates. So I'm like, this cannot take long. So I... Um, came out in 2013? Well? Came out in 2013. Yeah. PlayStation 4 came out November of 2013. So like... December. Like, 2013. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. So this came out like right after I bought right it. And I think I pre-ordered it or whatever. So I had a copy, but I never really actually played it. So 22 updates. <laughs> it took four hours to download all these updates, right? So oh, my I'm like, okay. And unlike, let's say, like the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox or, you know, any anything else, you can do other things with the system mm-hmm. other than download these updates. So the thing was just not frozen it was working in the background but um yeah so finally hours later i'm like okay i want to play the game now you gonna play a game i press x the game starts it has to install all these updates <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. eight hours later eight hours later eight. wow you let it you, you <laughs> just let it go i i just let it go i'm like i let it go you know i'm switching inputs you know periodically making sure that one the machine still works because like you know it's making noise <laughs> i see the lights <laughs> flashing but I'm like eight hours later um i finally have a game i can play so oh, wow. this is two days and 12 hours worth of work <laughs> <laughs> i turn it on i i, I race one race <laughs> and then turn it off immediately <laughs> and no. and not because like um it, it, it like looked it still the game still looks great like it plays well but like i completely lost all my appetite for using the thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah eight hours later Who yeah wouldn't? 12 like 12 12 hours later so oh my goodness um yeah so i uh i'm like man <sighs> that was using a, a playstation 3 in 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 2020 Mm-hmm. I mean, again, like the machine, it it still it still works. Um, the controller is vaguely familiar. I mean, it, it weighs a lot less than the current PlayStation Four controller. Um, mm-hmm. I tried to log into like my Netflix and yeah, um, Netflix and um, Hulu, and those things still work. It's just they all look the same. It's yeah. just super slow, <laughs> super duper slow. But it was amazing to me that like um, how long it took to do the installation of um updates and whatnot like i feel like nowadays those updates they just kind of like just push you to the newest one usually but yeah usually but yeah for that it, it really made me do everything in in parallel and i'm like man did we really live like this before <laughs> <laughs> we did actually if so you yeah like so even set it back up to like ps2 PS2 had yeah. memory cards, though, right? For it had memory, memory cards. Yeah, but there were there was like there weren't any updates for it. So literally, it's like you know the disc you got was what the game was. But at least you put it in and it worked. You know, if there were bugs, I mean, you were stuck with it. But at least you mm. could, if you had only a few minutes time, like you could just play and get your game on. But um, so in in retro news, I was uh, reading a story uh, about GameStop and how it's changing because. Obviously, um, in 2020, we download everything. Yeah, and um, then they you know, say people they are less filed for bankruptcy or something. Yeah, they've they've gone through different periods, you know, get different investors and whatnot. But um, obviously, we're about to embark on a new video game generation, and people are more and more um, used to downloading their software directly to mm-hmm. the machines. And um, with everything being mm-hmm. online, it's definitely going to be a bigger focus. So you know, GameStop is a place that still sells physical stuff you know they've been trying to kind of adapt and um nowadays if you walk in there i mean it's pretty much like a toy store you know they sell used games they sell new games but they're about more about supporting the culture around the stuff 
you know, like the merchandise, cards, collectible games, T-shirts, and mm-hmm. the like. And um, what they have been starting to do, they have a trial program that's running out of uh, Tulsa right now. And mm. um, they're trying to make reform GameStop into a place that you go to specifically to just like buy games, but a place yeah. to like kind of hang out and experience them. So there's one um, store out there that has like almost like an internet cafe inside okay. you know, with gaming stations that like, if you are um, a member, their power up awards card, I think is what it's called. If you're a member, you can like, you know, can go in and play game. some of the latest games for free. They have stations set up with like, you know, old school CRTs and all the retro games and such and mm-hmm. curated lists from the staff about which games to play. And, you know, it's it, it'll be interesting to see if, um, you know, they can kind of get that set up all around the country, because I think in a lot of ways, you know, it might be a cool way for them to kind of stay relevant. I think it will boom them. You know how popular game cafes are? Like internet cafes, dude? Yeah. I mean, yeah, definitely all around the world. And, you know, I think gaming's never been cheaper, but gaming hardware is still pretty expensive. You know, if you want like a really good PC, like it can be out of reach for a lot of people. And, um, you know, for a monthly membership that's reasonable, I think going to GameStop as a brand might be a cool place to kind of, again, experience some of the best of the newest stuff and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, some of the retro stuff, especially when you think that they have to compete with um, services like GeForce Now and um, PlayStation Now and uh, Mm -hmm. Xbox Game Pass as ways, like almost like the Netflix equivalent of like getting access to games. And for GameStop, this could be the blockbuster equivalent, and I know that's not mm. maybe the greatest, ex- you know, way to think about it because blockbuster obviously didn't make it. But you know, video games are still very much a physical thing. Like you need a yeah. controller in your hand, you need hardware to experience them in some capacity. And mm. um, yeah, man, I thought it was really cool as a way for them to kind of expand their 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 brand and continue mm. to be relevant. <clears throat> Did you know? It was, I mean, you worked for them, right? It was a yeah, yeah, Dallas it was company. Years back. Yep. Mm-hmm. Great. Yeah. Wow. Great. Great. Farm Texas is the headquarters. I did not know. I'm looking at all the details right now. Founded in '84. I wasn't mm-hmm. even born yet. Yeah. Wow. Man, you just made me feel really old. Sean, we're at that age now, Sean. I know. We're dude. no longer wow. kids, bro. You're just like wasn't even wasn't even born yet. I was like, I, I was. <laughs> I definitely was, but yeah, you know, uh, I, I definitely look fondly back at the time of that I, I worked at GameStop, and it would have been really cool if um, my store had a dedicated space to, you know, kind of experience the culture around games as opposed to just being a place where, you know, we were selling magazines and um, pre orders for stuff. Mm-hmm. So, hey, man, uh, let's see what they we'll see what they're able to do. Because, you know, obviously the, the marketplace is changing and, you know, at least to get access to games, um, you know, you can definitely just do it right in front of your TV, right in your house or Correct. your computer screen or your phone. I mean, it's now can be streamed everywhere pretty much. Yeah. I mean, but, if not, they're going to be the best place to go get Funko Pops. <laughs> <laughs> But it, I, I'm assuming this is correct right here. Like, I'm just looking at the numbers, and Wiki is always updated. But their total equity, they're down mm-hmm. $1.3 billion. Yeah. And it makes sense because, you know, people every year, everyone gets, you know, more and more used to, um, you know, shopping online. Like, I, no, was in, I was in the store the other day. And while I was online, some guy came in because remember I was talking a few weeks ago about like the Division Two being on sale for like three bucks, mm-hmm. right? So I'm not gonna shout out the the store that I went into, but anyway, while I was at the store, the clerk was like, as a dude was walking up to the counter, he was about to buy a copy of the Division for five dollars, right? Oh, wow. The dude's like, "Hey man, look, I shouldn't be telling you this. However, if you just go on your Xbox right now, you could buy it for three bucks." 
He was like, if you want, he was like, look, get get a get a. He sold the guy um like a Xbox Live like points Pass. card, right? Mm-hmm. You know, for ten bucks or whatever it was. That way, he's and then the guy just went home and downloaded the game. I mean, yeah. it's like yeah, he made a sale in the moment, but still, that guy who wasn't thinking about making a purchase online now is gonna look at that store and yeah. you know has a little bit more seven more bucks to be exact to spend on the store in the future yeah and he's gonna see how easy it was just to do that you yeah. know and that's and it's like so if you're in a business like how do you how do you compete and stay relevant and uh, i guess maybe having their little game um like internet cafe slash board game slash card slash uh merchandise store might be the way to do it you know what the um you know what the japanese answer to that sean what do you got (laughs) (laughs) what (laughs) 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 hold on hold on sean i'll look it up sean this is the japanese answer to that (laughs) <laughs> just get a whole bunch of uh anime style anime japanese school girls, school girls in the front uh, just a, twirling uh, around dancing to like some japanese song there you Done. go that's all that they need incident you know, cafe in, right there in america in, in 2020 is <laughs> with this with a sailor Jap- outfit japanese school girls <laughs> and sailor outfits <laughs> oh my god hey man you know so yeah that oh. was um some of my Tech Tuesday. What else do we have? Uh, Charles uh, Babbage is the dude's name that started yeah. it. Well, yeah, because um, the company used to be Babbage's. I don't know. See, oh, I don't know if you oh, definitely oh. remember Babbage's. Maybe, maybe not. But I remember like back in the day, there was Babbage's. There was Software, etc. There mm. was EB Games. There was Funko Land, a game. And then I think... Eventually, they all merged to become GameStop. But I guess yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, right, Funko right. Land kind of had the same idea that um, this new GameStop is going to have. Where, like, Funko Land, pretty much, they, like, had all the used games. Mm-hmm. They used to have TVs set up mm-hmm. in the walls that, like, you could kind of try the game before you left the store if it was used. Yeah. You know? But, um, yeah. So we'll, we'll oh, see. Cool. We'll see if they, if they, if they make it. You know, um, I went to the GameStop here by us actually the other day, and it's mm-hmm. still that same dude. So I, I must know this guy for like I don't know, better half of eight years now. He's still the same employee there. He's now store manager. I'm, I'm assuming. Hey, way shout out before, to him. but it's literally just him. That's yeah, it. and that's a, that's exactly him and like it. two other like, employees. Nothing crazy. Yeah, I mean, as business, you know, just like us, you know, when business is trending down, I mean, you only got X amount of payroll to pay someone Mm -hmm. to be there so you know they're gonna have a reduction in staff and you know they're gonna try to change their products to be as high margin as possible Mm -hmm. and then they got all sorts of systems to kind of simplify uh running the store moment to moment yeah i mean man i I definitely remember coming in in the mornings and having my old list of price changes and a whole <laughs> bunch of labels and physically having to go to each box and just and sticker sticker changing sticker. it uh, yeah that's man. Not too bad. i mean again it was i i look back fondly at my time there um i got to work with some really cool people and you know i love video games as evidenced by this conversation so mm. it was it was cool to to work there and experience it but Man, as much as I love video games, like I definitely understand, there's no reason to even go into one of those stores for you know to to get access to the new stuff. Yeah, so, we'll see what they do. Yeah, and that's my my retro my retro tech Tuesday. That is a retro tech Tuesday. That's not too that's not too intense, man. I was looking up because I completely forgot PS2 did have uh, memory cards. Yeah, they did. Right? They were. Eight megabytes, and there's no two fifty six. That's low. Yeah, that's all they, lies. Yeah, they got like all sorts of weird eight. adapters for it now. But it's yeah, it was an, eight megabytes, and I remember. Yeah, it's an eight that megabyte first, stick. This is what yeah, it looked that like. First Christmas, they were like impossible to come by mm-hmm. to find a memory card. I was but just to think about that like, eight megabytes could store all of what you needed to store. Here it is. Here it is. Here's the original megabytes. one. 
That's it. Yeah. That's the blue 8 yep. megabit card. I think I might have three of these. Yeah, I think I, I probably still have at least two. I know I definitely had one that was clear and one that was like clear and green. Oh my god, Sean, this is the this is the ultimate throwback for Yeah, me, the OG. Yeah. Oh my goodness, they got it. No. Yeah. I had fifteen of these. <laughs> I I yeah, remember man. I had fifteen of these and ten of which had um Final Fantasy save Final Fantasy Seven save files at different locations. And Same so if man, I wanted was... to replay it, I was like, Oh, that's on like the fourth one. And then you stick in the third disc. Oh man. I can't wait. I can't wait for Final Fantasy, Sean. Can you tell? <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. It's, you got a few more weeks. I feel it's a I know. April. It's so, it's so, oh April. man, I cannot wait. Cannot. April before it drops? Wait. I think uh, someone shared it on our Facebook page. Um, like a back to back, um, like sequence from one of the, the trails when, um, when Cloud and Barrett was in, uh, the Shinra Core. Like the, okay. the PS1 version of the, mm-hmm. the storyline matched up with the the revamped remake of Final Fantasy VII and just kind of played head on the se- in the same sequence that you're kind of going about mm-hmm. it. I was like, boom. Yeah, man. Oh, I mean, Sean, it's going to be an experience, like man. 20, 25 years almost? Sean, it's going to be another 315 hours. Years? Yeah, man. I Again... It's very interesting, and again, it's just, it's really interesting to think about like how the industry has changed in in the time since that first game came out. Because you would have had to go to a GameStop, mm-hmm. and go and pre order it, mm-hmm. and wait in line, and bring it home, and it would have had three discs, and you would have had the hope like one of them was a scratch, because you would have got a strategy <laughs> got like all this stuff is like completely different. And now it's just like you could from your web browser, you could just order a copy it'll be there downloaded and 12 o'clock on the night of release you'll be able to start playing and you can share clips and chat with people in real time and you know kind of experience it all so now do you feel as if that this trend is going to start happening though because like i think i think the gaming world is waiting to see how ff7 remake is going to hit sales because <clears throat> if you can tell already, I mean, Disney is literally doing it right now. They've kind of stopped all production of new items and just remaking their old movies kind of, right, per se. And then mm-hmm. that little trend is literally happening in Hollywood where they're remaking their old films kind of in a different spin for the new era. Do you think I video mean, games it- will also take shape? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's been that way pretty much since the Nintendo. <laughs> like, mm. I feel like the easiest thing to do is to kind of take something that's a proven success and iterate on it, you know? Got it. Like, it requires... I'm going to say it's not that it doesn't require work, but when you think about all the universe building mm. for any, you know, for any product, right? Like, there's some knowledge that you have to communicate to people and tell them, like, if it's something they've never heard of, like, this is why it should be important to you. Yeah, but if you're doing a remake or a revamp, like that work's already been done, and now you can kind of sell people on the new methods of delivery, nah. right? It's just like that's why they keep on remaking Spider-Man movies. That's why that's they true. make Batman all the time? It's because like you already know the myth for the most part. Mm-hmm. You already know the myth of Batman. You know what motivates him. You know like. You know, it's a, it's a revenge story. It's a, a a story of a guy who uh, capitalism is uh, he's got he's got access to all the resources. And if you had all the access to all the resources, what could you do to shape your community? You know, maybe yeah. you'd be a vigilante, and fuck people up. <laughs> you know, and wear a cape. That's what you. <laughs> maybe that's what you'd want to do. You know. Black. Right, right, right. You know, like that's what you'd want to do. You think you want to solve your problems that way, or maybe you'd be more benevolent and, you know, uh, do things differently. You know, what if you weren't the smartest or the fastest, or you weren't an alien from another planet? <laughs> maybe you didn't have a magic lasso, but you're Batman and you're rich. You're just, I mean, Batman, you know, you got ba- time. Like badass. He's badass, but he's still well, a like dude. a human. Yeah, he's a dude. He's a dude with time and money, like, uh-huh. which is, 
in a, a lot, lot of, of money. you, know, a, you lot know, of money. a lot of money. Like nothing's really gonna stop him. And that's a superhero too, you know, or rather a superpower <laughs> too. So you Tell know, a lot of money. They can retell Batman again. They just showed um, pictures of Ruben Pattinson, the dude from Twilight, is Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, like, and they could just show you him in a suit, you know, in some mood lighting, and you're just like, oh, okay, what's the spin? What's their spin going to be with that guy? Yeah, for him, you know. I actually saw, but they don't have to. to they, but they don't have to say, hey, this he's not um, Gerbil Man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like, man, what's Gerbil Man's, uh, you know, backstory? <laughs> Why is he fighting crime? <laughs> like, no, he's um, Batman, and you already know what it is. You know, it's gonna be a Batmobile. You know, he's gonna be in a Metropolis. Uh-huh. You know he's gonna have Butler. Do you which is think they're dope. gonna do the same voice? You think he's gonna the, try to do the gra- the gravelly voice? I don't know. Who knows? Because like they should give him if you ever shiny, hear him speak, sparkly skin, he's not like necessarily. Twilight, he's he doesn't have the. I don't know. I don't know the, the gravelly gravel. I'm not the actor. They can, sure, they can who knows for training for this? So what, I have no idea what the spin is going to be. I don't know, but again, it's like we're already interested because we already know the myth of Batman, and now mm-hmm. we're just going to be looking to see um, what either what story they're going to tell or yeah. what familiar stories they're going to tell. You know, I know I can ask my actor buddy, and he'll be just like, "Yeah, you know, you go training for it because he he tried out for stuff for it." But yeah. I, I completely dig it. I, I yeah, just hope but- that it just doesn't become too normal where, like, okay, let's say in next year, right? Um, mm-hmm. let's take a greatest hits, Red Dead, the original Red Dead, which I, which I absolutely love more so than the second one that came out that I thought was complete mm-hmm. trash. You'd be like, do a remake or some junk and literally the same story with like just higher graphics. Maybe yeah. told it slightly different from the original, but still gave you the experience that you all well in love. Would you dig it? Like I would dig it. I mean, I think it's. I think sometimes it's going to be a case of work by work. Like something, the scope of Red Dead, or like even let's say um, the Grand Theft Autos that were like on like the PlayStation ah, Three. The originals. I yeah. think it might be too much work to redo those you know all the assets and the time and re-recording to kind of make it worthwhile but i do think that through backwards compatibility um they will always make it so that you have access to those things yeah. and generally i think from that generation going forward the assets were made in quality that is scalable enough so yeah like i don't know a port of red dead redemption one is not going to look as good as um red dead redemption 2 does yeah yeah. but even as as far as backwards compatibility is concerned like they have scaled it up to 4k it looks great it looks it looks and it's available and it's cheap so like you'll have access to it like you know i think on smaller scale stuff smaller scale but higher quality scale stuff let's say like the resident evil 2 that just came out or Mm. the resident evil 3 that just got re-released it's like those are smaller games you know take less time to complete there's less assets Mm -hmm. to kind of redo and flip and because of that like it's probably an easier project to tackle Ah, okay but i think you're always i just i don't know i feel like there's always going to be a little a a little case of both i mean even with movies right it's like there's Mm -hmm. the remake of aladdin you know with will smith and the cg but also you could get the robin williams version of the animated film alongside it like it'll be there for you and both are going to have higher quality a sound different. and, yeah. you know, different vibe. But the quality, mm-hmm. you know, like the quality of playback is going to be the same on whatever thing you're purchasing it for now. And I think that that's probably the route that they're going to go going forward. No, I agree. I actually, because we just saw, not, not necessarily saw, but now <clears throat> they're pushing. If you, because uh, you, if you watch a lot of Hulu or Netflix, uh, the mm-hmm. Mulan movie yeah, uh, standalone movie is out in mm-hmm. like a few weeks, right? Sure. And the trailer looks phenomenal. Like it mm-hmm. looks great. Like I can't wait. I, I'm actually excited to go yeah, see it. I'm like I know the story already. Too. Sometime, but in this is going to be like live action. Place. You know, but shout out to the Asians. That's why I'm so excited. Yeah, man. Shout out to that. Shout out to uh, But it will feel like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Um, already. Ask and 
And think about that, right? It's like you could retell that story with the movie making techniques that weren't even really available. Back you know, then. it's like maybe back then it was Disney's vision. It's like, yo, we got it had this has to be a cartoon. Mm-hmm. You know? But now people are willing to kind of experience it as live action and it's gonna be high quality and you got you know, young people that didn't see it and parents in our generation, like you and mm-hmm. I, right? Like you're old enough to have kids. You 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 can take your kids to go see it and you're gonna enjoy it too. Yeah. I just wonder who they're gonna use as the Mongolian. Like if you think of mm-hmm. all the movie stars, who can play the Han that's sinister looking enough? <laughs> <laughs> granted, granted, I don't know that many like Asian actors, but like who would who would literally play the dude is supposed to be like six foot tall, massive, have like, you know, the chinky ass like Mustache that kind of goes around. We're gonna, wild we're gonna go hair. with the dude who plays Han in the Fast and Furious movies. <laughs> <laughs> He's back. So. Supposedly had banged every woman at every at every <laughs> stop because that's what the Han did. Literally did. Right. Right. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have the gene somewhere because that's yeah, just, man, that's that's, that's a literally dope, what he did. A crazy story considering like how how the how it actually happened. Yeah, but. The fact that that dude's DNA is like everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. is ridiculous. Is ridiculous. Yeah, that's another that's another story for a different time. That's kid. another story. <laughs> <laughs> Man was. Uh, it just went from zero to a hundred in like two seconds. Oh, but uh, if you real, want to man. spread your seed, just bang everybody. Right. That's that's the moral of the story. I, I guess so, man. If you're a, a dude, world. if you're a dude, if you're a dude, if you wanna, if you wanna spread your seed around, that's how you do it. If you're a woman, I mean, you could do it too. Um, but you, I, I'm assuming you need to get different dudes all the time. But hey, it's, it's going it's to take a lot longer if you're a lady. It's going to take a lot longer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Ugh. But anyway, that's <laughs> that's all we got for the Tech <laughs> Tuesday. Um, as I said, uh, we are video format. I, I'm going to make a point to say this every time at the beginning and at sure. the end of it. We are video yeah. format. Sean and I are talking to each other on face to face, but you can catch us at Chef Salty Pork Podcast on YouTube. You can check them out over there at MetroCard X on Twitter. I keep forgetting. I got a point away. Yeah, I got a point this way, right? Yeah. Um, I'm like under the camera. Metrocard, on what? Twitter <laughs> at Chef T, <laughs> at Chef Salty on Gmail for any questions. Um, mm-hmm. And then hopefully we can get uh, a couple more sponsors going on. But that was really cool that we finally got our first sponsor the other day. But yeah, I'm trying man. to get it for uh, for Manscaped, Sean. I have like a hey, you like know what? Cool... I've seen some really cool Manscaped uh, ads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah online. But I think we should just do it anyway because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a firm. Blue. I have oh, I have yeah. their products. Like I bought it. It's great, especially the ball deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, when you Yo, know, you know. Like, you know, straight like up, when, I use their when products. When you know, like, you know. That is legit a good company. And the trimmer in itself is... Yo. Hey. You don't want to use the same trimmer for your balls for your face, right? That's like the I whole would thing. like to think not. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that... Peace out, internet. Oh. <laughs>